Are you having a hard time getting your hands on Zalatol gum and mints? Not every country has access to these products, which is why I'm going to share in this video how you can use Zalatol crystals instead. And this is actually my preferred method. I only use these gums and mints when I'm out and about and I don't really have access to the crystals, but I think you can use the crystals throughout the day all the time if you do it smartly. So in this video, I'm going to share the pros and cons of Zalatol crystals versus Zalatol gum and mints. And I'm also going to share my routine as to how I would use the Zalatol crystals. And at the end of it, I'll share some frequently asked questions that people have when it comes to Zalatol crystals. And I'll wrap it up there. So let's begin. So the first thing is that Zalatol crystals compared to Zalatol gum, I would say it's as efficient. So there's not one product over here that is better for my oral hygiene. I feel like whenever I use Zalatol crystals and whenever I use Zalatol gum, they both have the same effect on my teeth. And I actually might dare to say that Zalatol crystals is a bit better because I can regulate the amount of Zalatol that I'm using for my routine and that also allows me to regulate it according to the meal that I'm eating. So if I'm eating something really fatty, something really intense and saucy that will leave my teeth extremely plaque filled and so on, I'll use slightly more Zalatol crystals. And if I'm eating like a lunch that is kind of light and not as intensive, but I still want to use Zalatol crystals, I'll use a bit less that time. So with a gum, it's slightly harder to regulate the amount of Zalatol that you use, but with Zalatol crystals, you can regulate it really easily. A slight con of Zaltol crystals is that there's a learning curve to how to use it, which is why I'm making this video over here so I can share how I use it. Because no one really tells you how to use Zaltol crystals for oral hygiene. And I think that it's important to understand and know because there's a lot of risks that could occur if you start using Zaltol crystals in a bad way. So for example, you need to make sure to not consume it after moving it around in your mouth. You need to make sure that you know the dosage of it, around 3 to 5 grams. And you also need to understand that it's a risk for pets and animals around your house because they don't have the same digestive system as a human being, so they can't really digest Zalatol that well, which makes it lethal for pets. So there's a lot of small things that you need to understand before getting onto the Zalatol crystal train. But I'm going to share it all in this video over here. One big pro with Zalatol crystals versus Zalatol gum is actually the pricing of it. So here's the pricing of these products over here and here's how much it would cost per session. So it's just way cheaper to use Zalatol crystals over here versus the gum. But the one thing that I would say gums are superior at is the convenience. So if I am out and about and I am eating at, let's say, a lunch spot, having a pizza slice. Zalatol gum is way easier to just plop in your mouth, clean, do its thing, and then spit it out in a trash can. With Zalatol crystals, it's way more of a endeavor because you need to like swish it around and move it, kind of like a mouthwash. So the convenience factor of Zalatol gum and mints is just way higher than Zalatol crystals. Zalatol crystals is way more accessible and easier to get your hands on than Zalatol gum and mints. And it's because Zalatol crystals are used in cooking and other things. So you can get it at like a, a wellness store because Zalatol crystals is also a sugar substitute. Another pro that I really found with Zalatol crystals is that I don't even consume any of the Zalatol which is kind of different from the gums and mints. So whenever I'm eating the gums, or I mean eating the mints, I'm chewing the mint and I'm swallowing all of the powder, so I am consuming the Zalatol. And with the gums, I'm chewing the gum, and the Zalatol mixes with my saliva, which I also then swallow. So this leads to actually me sometimes having tummy aches from using the Zalatol gum and mints, just with the way that it reacts with my tummy. Now, with Zalatol crystals, 
Since I'm swishing it around in my mouth, most of the times I'm actually not consuming a drop of xylitol crystals. I'm just moving it in my mouth and then I'm spitting it out. So after a meal, this is how I would use xylitol crystals for oral hygiene. The first thing I do is to make sure that my mouth is as clean as possible. That means rinsing it or using a tongue scraper and getting as much bacteria out of my mouth. Then I use one third of a teaspoon, which is around three to five grams, and I plop it in my mouth. What happens is that the xylitol crystals mix with your saliva and it becomes this liquid that you're then moving around. You want to move that liquid around and try to hit as many of your teeth as possible and just keep on swishing it around there. So keep swishing that xylitol saliva that you now have in your mouth for around five minutes. I've tried it beyond five minutes, like 10, 15 minutes, and I haven't found any additional benefits of doing it for a longer time. Unlike oil pulling where you have to spit it out in your green bin or something else, you can spit xylitol crystals out in the sink because it doesn't solidify at a lower temperature like the oils you use in oil pulling. Then try not to drink for around an hour or so because you don't want to wash away all the benefits or eat away all the benefits that you currently have in your mouth where these xylitol crystals are feeding the bacteria on your teeth so that they become less sticky and will eventually fall off. So after like half an hour to an hour or so, you will feel that your teeth are a bit more smoother compared to before you used xylitol. This is the two frequently asked questions I get mostly with xylitol crystals. Should you be getting the corn xylitol or the birch xylitol? So throughout my experiments, I feel like both corn and birch, so this over here is from birch trees, and this over here is a more corn-based one, and I've also used another corn-based one before this. All of them have the same properties for oral hygiene. At the end of the day, you're extracting the compound of xylitol, and one is not better than the other. One of them is just extracted from corn, and the other one is just extracted from birch trees. So regardless of if it's birch xylitol or corn xylitol, just get the highest grade that you can get, and you should be totally fine with that. Should you be consuming the xylitol? And I am always in the camp of, if I don't need it in my body, then let's just not put it in my body. And right now, xylitol is being used for me purely as a oral hygiene tool, and that is what I wanna leave it at. So some people use xylitol as a sugar substitute. I just use it specifically for oral hygiene purposes. And this is because I've seen a lot of studies that are floating around that say that things like xylitol can lead to heart attack and stroke risks going up. So even though xylitol is being used as a sugar substitute to then bake with and so on, I would personally just try to minimize the consumption of xylitol if you can. And that's it for this video. I hope a lot of people who have a hard time getting their hands on xylitol gum and mints will see this video and hopefully start their own oral health journey with xylitol crystals instead. I use it more than xylitol gum these days. It's cheaper, it's as efficient, if not more efficient in some scenarios, and it's just a bit less convenient, which is the the big downside of xylitol crystals compared to xylitol gum. But for oral hygiene purposes, this is great. This is as good, if not better, in my opinion. Now, if you've used xylitol crystals before or are trying it right now, well, comment down below with your experience as to how it works for you and your oral hygiene. My name is Paul, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.